Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Quick Tips presented by Healthmark Industries. I'm Steve Kovac, and today we're going to talk about what can I use to write on my sterile barriers, such as your pill pouches, the tape on your wrap, uh, the little card that you put on your uh, containers. So this is a common picture of what I find in an apartment that is being used to write on sterile barriers. As you know, we had health marker educators do clinical practice reviews. And a lot of times I'm looking at people and ask them to see what they're writing on the different pouches. And I have them empty their, their uh, you know, uh, pockets and see what's there. And I ask them, why are they using what they do? And many, many, many of the members have said, uh, or staff members have said, well, we get them at the dollar store because they have different colors and we like different colors uh, and they have this approval stamp on it. So it's okay to use. Or some have said, uh, we get them from the stationery store. This is what supply chain gives us. They say markers are markers. But as you can see here, we have different pens and ink pens and that's actually a skin marker. Now, I don't know what they're using that for, but I don't think, I didn't ask them if they're putting it on their pouches or wraps or whatever they were doing, but I will too, I'll raise my hand and I'll say over the course of my life working in sterile processing, I've probably used an ink pen when I shouldn't have, but I really didn't know the difference. So as you know, with quick tips, what we're always trying to do is to help you understand why you're doing something to help you get better at it, to stay at the best practice, and to challenge you, and challenge you what you're doing, where you work. So I'm gonna present the facts, go through some things, and uh, at the end I'll ask, there'll be some questions and I'll actually, you might think again what you're using. So where do you find information on the type and kind of marker a department can use to write on wrappers, pouches, or container labels? First thing is uh, standards and guidelines. So you can see I got a little asterisk there. So I looked in um, my ANSI Amy SD79 and I've taken some highlights. And again, with all the quick tips that I do, I take snippets of standards, guidelines, articles, IFUs to help make a point, to make you think. And again, it's up to you to purchase those articles or those standards and guidelines or to read them completely so you understand what's going on. But here's a couple tips. Use non-toxic, non-bleeding ink that can help prevent toxic deposits on or in sterile packages. Using indelible ink might help prevent loss of labeling information. Well, that's what those markers you bought are, so hey, you might make it. Use approved marker for the sterilization process you are using. Well, the staff said they have some seal or something on it, Right on the film side, not the paper or Tyvek side. We understand that so it doesn't bleed through. Right on the tape, not the wrapper. That makes sense. And I put this one in here, instructions for use. Written recommendations provided by the manufacturers that provide instructions for operation and safe and effective use of devices. Get this all the time. People will call up. Your IFU, I can't use it. It must say this. It must say that. Uh, why doesn't it say this? Or... Uh, the IFU, the IFU. So I am going to challenge you. So where else do you get information? Peer-reviewed articles, the OEM of the products you are using, the IFUs, technical articles and other sources uh, like, uh, well, uh, your technical and your training manuals. I'm sorry, I just noticed my face was covering that. So again, let us explore this a little deeper here. So which one can I use? So I need everybody to understand what's called the LHAMA. It's the Labeling of Hazardous Art Material Act. It's public law 100-695. Came around in about 1980 and then it was updated around 1990, and I'll get into that. What that deals with is that some markers have a seal that say ASTM D4236 on them. 
Is that an approval to use them in my department on sterile barriers? Evidently, some people do. Well, what does this really mean? It is a standard published by the non-industry chaired Artist Paint Subcommittee of the American Society for Testing and Materials. As the standard itself declares, since knowledge about chronic health hazard is incomplete and warnings cannot cover all uses of any product, it is not possible for precautionary labeling to ensure completely safe use of an art product. Remember that art product. If any marker states conforms to D4236 on an art material label, it does not mean the product is non-toxic. Rather, it means the material has been evaluated by a toxicologist for acute and chronic toxicity. It does not state it can be used on medical grade peel pouches, wrappers, or go under sterilization conditions. These markers are labeled art supplies. Interesting. So, can you still use these? Well, now some markers and their inks have another type of seal on them. It is the ACMI, Art and Creative Materials Institute seal. So what does that seal tell you? They have two different certificate seals. The AP approved product seal that is displayed on non-toxic products and the CL, the cautionary labeling seal that is displayed on products that require labeling for safe use. The ACMI certified product seals indicates that these products have been evaluated by a qualified toxicologist and are labeled in accordance with federal and state art labeling laws. Interesting. This requirement applies to art materials that are intended for use in the household or by children which are initially introduced into interstate commerce on or before 11-18-1990. So what was going on is there was lead and other toxic chemicals in a lot of the art supplies and paints and markers. And artists and children and people were getting sick by it. So they needed to pass some public laws that you couldn't have certain things in them. And that's what these seals are about. It deals with art supplies. Nothing that I know of in the IFUs that I know about state that they can be used in sterilization process. So let's move to the next one. So there's another marker that people use that I've seen. It's called the industrial marker. My marker states it's an industrial marker and states can withstand up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, okay, that's really good. How many of you have actually read the IFU and pulled it up? Well, I have a link right here that when you're done, you can go stop this for a minute, copy it, click on it, read the IFU. And you know what it's going to say? It can be used in high humidity places like bathrooms, laundry places. Nowhere does it state it can be used in steam sterilization. It can be used on medical grade peel pouches. Interesting. Now, again, one of my mentors and my best friends, Mr. Ray Tarasi, he wrote a little article on this, and there's a link for that. And it's in, I just took a snippet, again, read the whole article. Regardless of the ink color, it is important that you only use marking pens that have been validated for use in sterilization conditions in the sterilization process you are utilizing. Most markers have not been validated for industrial usage or for use in the sterilization conditions. Has it been for EO, VPRO, dry steam, uh, steam sterilizers? I, I, I can't find it. If you can, please let me know. So I need you to ask yourself these questions on what you are presently using. Do you have the IFU for the markers used in your department? Do you? We ask for the IFU all the time of our products. Did you ask for the one on this marker? 
Use your critical thinking skills to make sure you are consistent in your practice. If you're asking and following the IFU for everything else, are you following it for your marker? And if supply chain is telling you you must use this, you need to stand up and say, this is not approved for what I'm going to do. Just because you can buy it at the dollar store for a buck doesn't mean that's where you should go or you can get them from the stationery store. To me, it would make sense to get something in writing from the marker, from the maker, that's a tongue twister, from the maker of the marker, that it can be used on medical grade peel pouches, wraps, and withstand the sterilization process you are using. Work with a trusted vendor and not your dollar store or stationery department or supply chain who might be telling you you have to buy it. Stand up for your rights. Many companies have and sell approved markers. They're out there. I work for a company, Healthmark, that does sell an approved marker. We partnered with WePack, who's one of the world's largest manufacturers of packaging, and um, they sell markers. We, we sell those markers. I have different links where you can read about the marker and a letter that you can use it and so on. So the products are out there. It is up to you whether you want to use them or not. Or I can't prove that using the wrong mar a, a marker that isn't approved has caused some issues with a patient. No, I can't. But I do know if you're going to keep yourself to a certain standard, I think you should use that standard for everything you do and not just cherry pick. Remember, you are to the heart of the hospital. You do a great job every day. You, you have an impact on patient outcomes, and it's do the right thing every time. I'm from Detroit, and Lily Tomlin's from Detroit, a famous comedian. I wanted to leave you with a little different quote on this chip tip. I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that. Then I realized I was somebody. So is this something you want to do something about or not? It's up to you. I've presented the information, and again, it's open for discussion. It's good for everybody to talk about it. So remember to keep it clean. Thank you for taking the time today to watch this quick tip. Send your comments to AskTheEducator at hmark.com or after you view this video, you can put a comment in the comment section. Please share this video with others. Talk about it. Go from there. And I look forward to sharing with you more quick tips in the future. Take care. Have a great day. Bye now.